It's time to put some strawberry in that strawberry cider. Back on June 10th of 2020, today, by the way, is July 9th, for those of you keeping track, we actually made this strawberry cider, which means it's about, you know, four weeks old now, no problem. So it should be ready for the next phase where it becomes strawberry cider. Right now it's just cider, which isn't a bad thing. And before anybody starts getting on me for the technicalities of the names, yes, technically this would be wine, okay? Because we started with a 1.100 gravity, which will put this in the like 12 to 15% range for alcohol. Yes, I know, it's really a wine. We're calling it cider anyway. So, how do we make this into a strawberry cider? Really simple, add strawberries. Done, right? Well, you'd think so, but not really, because even when we were trying to plan this out, we were like, okay, we know we want to have a full gallon of end product, but because this is already fermented and now we're adding whole fruit, we really don't want to have a lot of airspace, headspace, because that could lead to problems, which we've had in the past. So, Brian... With peaches, mostly. <laughs> Brian used is gray matter and decided that we were going to use a wide mouth one gallon jar, put our strawberries in first, and then fill to appropriate with the cider because we know the cider on its own is a-okay to drink and that way anything that's extra goes in our bellies and we're happy. So, firstly, everything that we're going to use today was sanitized in the red bucket of get wilder with that every time now. <laughs> energy! You've got to have energy! And we're going to rack this from this container into the wine mount, but not quite yet. So let me just put this out of the way. Okay, as you can tell, we are in Florida because we have Publix strawberries. This is two pounds of whole frozen strawberries. Am I going to mash them up? No. Am I going to cut them up? No. Am I going to do anything to them other than dump them into a jar? No. One thing I'd like you to know, though, before I put them in there, is the ingredients list for these strawberries. Ingredients. Strawberries. That's it. Nothing else. That's why I purchased these strawberries. I'm just going to open them up and unceremoniously dump strawberry. Now, these are partially thawed. At this point, they've been sitting in this bowl for a while. They're not totally thawed. Just mostly thawed. Actually, not even mostly. Now, if our strawberry plants produce enough strawberries for us to make this from our own homegrown ones, we would, of course, have done that. But we would have still put them in the freezer because freezing, as we have mentioned before, breaks down the cell walls of the strawberries, making them look less than appealing, but helps for the juices to get out and intermingle and flavor yeah. your beverage. When they're frozen, you don't have to cut them up. Now, I'm going to make an executive decision here. We had initially thought that two pounds of strawberries was going to be what we needed. I don't think so. I think one pound is going to be enough. So you know what that means. We have more strawberries for something else. We can oh, go right back in hello. The are you dessert for Derica? <laughs> why, yes, you are. In case you're wondering why I made that decision, well, you know, I... I think I did two pounds last time I did it. It might have been one pound. I'm not really sure. We were trying to recreate that beverage. And I just looked at this and I said, if I put two pounds of strawberries in there, that's like a third of the container. This is not for fermentation. This is just for flavoring. Smells like strawberries to me. If I was to make a pulp out of this, this would be plenty to flavor this much cider. Because after all, we want it to still be cider, not strawberry juice. So. Next step is going to be racking from the original fermenter right into here. Plus, if I put two pounds in there, there'd be no room for the cider. For racking, we're going to be using our latest cast member, Wibble, the white bucket of levitation. And I'm very sorry, that was my total cheesy announcer voice. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> As always, when we rack, we put something higher, something lower, and then remove the bung. Put that back into turbos and we get an auto siphon. I like using an auto siphon to rack, and here's why. First, it's cheap, it's efficient, 
and it gets the job done with no real mess. And I don't have to put my mouth on the end of that, getting germs in there. I don't have to worry about filling in with tubes with water and all this other stuff. I don't need any electricity. It just works. Now, when I say cheap, it's like 15 or 20 bucks. It's really just not that much money. A lot of people fight me on the auto siphon. I don't know why. It's kind of like, hey, here's a wheel. It's the best machine ever. Well, I can come up with a better one. Okay, we've been using it for 10,000 years. Maybe not the auto siphon. <laughs> All right, when racking, you want to be careful because there is a ton of sediment in this one, and I do not want that going in here. Although, because this is still just a conditioning phase, it's not that critical. It's okay. We're going to have to rack again. I go about halfway down and get it going. This cider has not actually cleared yet either, which is kind of interesting. It's been a month. You'd think it'd start clearing, right? Don't worry about it. We're about to confuse it even more. <laughs> it's just going to have all kinds of stuff in there. We got the uh, Pyrex measuring cup just in case there was any extra. However, looking at this, I don't think there's really going to be. The idea, though, is we want it to be as close to the surface as possible. We want as little oxygen contact as we can get. We're getting very, very close. I'm not expecting this to ferment anymore. All right, I'm gonna stop it right there because once it comes out of that tube, we're very, very close to the top. Okay, the racking process is done. The level of the liquid is like right here. There's just about no extra airspace. And yeah, I know I'm talking over the liquid, it's okay. I'm gonna put a lid on it and we're gonna stick an airlock in there with sanitizer liquid in it. And some people would say, you don't need to do this in secondary. I disagree. If there's any off-gassing or anything happening, I really, you know, these thin-walled glass containers, they're not really made to hold carbonation. So I much prefer to see an airlock in there. It also it's tells me... It's a better safe than sorry situation. Yeah. And that's what a lot of brewing really is, is better safe than sorry. I mean, can you do it other ways? Sure. Because you know what? I can just take that whole vessel and pour it right into a bottle. I could do it from five feet up, too, and just make sure that it goes right in the but it's probably not the safest way to do it for a variety of reasons. You know, one being falling off the ladder to be five feet up. <laughs> Never mind the fact that I'd be oxidizing it and all other things. But just because you can doesn't mean you should in a lot of cases. And I just, I don't know, all the effort that went into this a month's time so far, why risk it? Use an auto siphon, do it properly, and you'll have a much safer brew that nothing's going to go wrong. So what's going to happen with this now? It's going to go sit for a few weeks, probably two to three weeks. We will check on it from time to time to make sure that there's no fuzzy business happening with the strawberries. A word of, I want to say caution, but it's really not caution. I just want to forewarn you that when you're fermenting or brewing with strawberries, they like to release their color turning almost completely white, yep. <laughs> which if you're not prepared for, may freak you out just a bit. Yeah, I believe some of that is because, well, you know, it's entirely possible that somebody might have gassed these a little bit for extra color or something like that. It's possible, but they do. They turn completely pure white and that's totally normal and uh, it's okay. If you look, this is already starting to change color. It's turning a little bit more pink. This will probably be very pink by the time it's done. Then we will see you in a little bit to go over that. Oops, we did it again. Well, sort of. We intentionally didn't take a reading on this because it's been sitting for a month. It's probably done. No need to worry about it because it's just not that critical at this juncture in time. However, I thought, you know, people might want to know, might want to follow along. So let's take a reading and see what our gravity is. We did add the strawberries in, so that's going to throw it off some. But it's all right. It doesn't really matter. It's more for curiosity's sake than anything. And they haven't had that much time in there. It's only been, you know, a couple minutes. And my initial suspicion is correct. Right now, it's reading 1.010. Now, if I can assume that a little bit of sugars got into this from the strawberries, let's say it might have been at like 1.000 which puts this at a solid 13.1% or even 13.5% using just the rough math that I like to use now, which by the way, that simple gravity measurement versus ABV is in parentheses, original gravity minus final gravity times 135. Why 135? Well, because 131.25 just seemed more inaccurate the higher we went in gravity. And 
it just got weird. So I said, 135, make it simple. I can do that in my head. No big deal. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. So today, what we want to do is get these strawberries out of here. They were put in on July 9th. Today's July 28th. It's a little bit longer than I really wanted, but uh, it's okay. Nothing should have happened. I believe fermentation still occurred. I did crack that lid as I was bringing it in here. So that's why you see the pressure difference. But um, I didn't actually like remove anything or anything like that yet. But what we want to do is get this lid off and we're going to take a reading before we remove the strawberries because actually we're going to do a strawberryectomy first yeah i want to show you what these strawberries actually look like no that is not just bad color on your television that is really the color they are it's kind of like a whitish grayish purple but if you look they have actually imparted a lot of their color into that cider which is pretty awesome if you ask me so we showed that to you on purpose because they don't look very good. Yeah, but that's normal. But that's normal. That way, in case you did this and you're following along at home and your strawberries look like that, you don't throw it out because there's nothing wrong with them. <laughs> they just don't look appetizing at all. So I sanitized the tongs because I knew this was going to be my method of strawberry removal. Um, I have much harsher methods. Yeah. Brian, Mine are fast, though. <sighs> He likes to think that, wouldn't he? <laughs> but I don't normally do most of the cleanup. So we have this rule in our household, and this is what's gotten us through a lot. Um, whoever cares most. And when you think about it, that applies to almost any situation. If you ever say, oh, where do you want to go? Or what do you want to do? What do you want to eat? How do you want to do this? How do you want to take care of this situation? If one of the two people, meaning us, is not really fussed either way, if the other one actually does have an opinion and cares about the situation, that's the choice that we go with. Now, if we both care, that's when things get a little bit interesting and we end up convincing each other. But nine times out of 10, what we end up doing is I fight my side, she fights her side. I say fight. I explain my side, she explains her side. And we realize that we're actually saying the exact same thing coming from slightly different viewpoints. And we get very excited about it and our voices grow in volume and then Tigger has to get in between us and yell at me. Yep. Yell at her. Notice that. Yell at her. Tigger's daddy's little girl. She defends me. By the way, if you don't know who Tigger is, she is our calico cat. One of our seven cats. But she would be very vociferous when we argue. Which we don't really argue. No. We just get loud. Yeah. All right. She's going to keep pulling strawberries out. Strawberryectomy is complete. All righty. So what I want to do now is take a reading, get a little sample, and see how it is. Now we're taking a reading because I want to see if it re-fermented after the last time. Because we did add fruit, which is sugars, which is fermentable. So there is a possibility of re-fermentation. It's not quite as clear as I would like it to be, but it is still fairly young. So, you know, I'm going to give that some time and see how it does. When we last checked it, it was 1.010. And right now I'm going to say it's 1.012, which means it's about two points higher than it was at that point, which means most likely it didn't referment, but it is possible that it did a little bit because the strawberries would add some sugars to it. So it could have refermented. Yeah. So, because this still needs some time, it's totally okay. But we now have a gauge of where it is now to know when it's done. And I'm going to pour off a little sample for us to taste. Whew, that was risky. You can kind of tell from the size of the samples how I feel about the brew. You can tell we might like this one. When they're little teeny tiny samples like half a sip, <laughs> means we probably aren't going to like it very much. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, it's a little cloudy still, which that's normal. I mean, it's not that old yet. This was started on June 10th, so I mean, the whole thing is only seven weeks old. Very strong strawberry smell, like fresh strawberry. Wow, that's that's actually really impressive. Oh, Yeah way strong like we did the, this is based off of a strawberry cider that we made once before this has much more strawberry scent it actually smells like my sister's strawberry shortcake doll when i was a kid which is to say almost a fake strawberry smell but those are real strawberries it has 
has an unusual flavor profile because you get, get a little bit of the weird the apple. young apple, which never is a good thing. But then the strawberries in there, you're like, oh yeah, strawberry. And then the weird apple comes back and you're like, is this good? Is this bad? Is it just young? Yes. It's a very light uh, cider. It's not as rich and heady as the other one that we were trying to clone. I think this is nicer, actually. It's a little more refreshing. Sparkling, this would be awesome. I don't know if we can make this sparkling at this point. Yeah. Uh, let me let me see if we can make this sparkling. Let me see what the uh, what the ABV is here. Oh yeah, we used Seville. S O four. It's already twelve percent. That's past what Seville S O four should be able to do. So I'm gonna say we probably cannot make this sparkling at this point. No sparkles for me. But, but it's still I amazing. have club soda over there. So when I pour this, I can do a mixed drink with club soda, get my sparkles and my strawberry cider all in one. This is really quite nice, though. I think with a little bit of age, let it clear out. This is going to be absolutely wonderful. So let's get a lid back yeah. on this in an airlock. All right, so I got my notes going right back on. This is going to go under the desk for another couple weeks. We'll take another reading at that point. And we'll see you then. So it's been two weeks and we're ready to take another hydrometer reading and then we're going to sample it to see if it's ready for bottles. Now at this point, this is a long running cider. It's been about three months almost to the day, but there's a lot of reasons behind that. There was so much stuff in here that needed to settle out. That's why we gave this a lot of extra time. Most ciders don't take anywhere near this amount of time. Had we used pure juice, it would have been a lot quicker too. So we're just going to take a reading, which means taking the cap off. Today we're using the Master Baster. I just named it that. I just got it. Like it literally got off the truck like an hour ago. He's so proud. I just think this is awesome. The other one that we used, I had to do like four squirts to get this full. This one, it's like one. I see the common ex section exploding. I am careful with what stays in the comment section. <laughs> So look at that, it fills it in like one shot. I mean, that's just awesome. But it didn't because I need more. It'll take me a little while to get used to it. Okay. I did spill a couple of drops, but it's okay. Every drop is sacred. Yeah, I can see the comment section on that now. <laughs> All right, so this was 1.012 when we last checked it. Today it is um, 0.994. Oh. So here's what I think we should do. We should rack this to a three liter bottle okay. and let it sit for a little bit longer because the fact that it dropped again makes me a little bit nervous about it still fermenting. So it's not ready to bottle. But I am gonna take a little sample anyway. I'm also thinking we might wanna back sweeten this because it's really dry. I'm not sure if we're gonna like it. So let's just, let's just taste it and see what we think. All right, let's do this. It, it has that dry, young smell. Now I just brushed my teeth. <laughs> Brian is now questioning some life choices. Whoa! I do not recommend brushing your teeth and then tasting this. So my evaluation of this is completely useless. So for me, when I smell it, I smell strawberries. And that makes me happy teeth. because I really like strawberries. Now, contrary to that, Brian isn't as excited about strawberries as I, I like am. them fine. They're not my favorite thing in the so world. So that may have slanted his viewpoint on this particular beverage. That and the toothpaste. That and the toothpaste. It's dry. It's dry. It has that sharp astringency that you attribute to dryness. Um, so yeah, 
without going into further rotation notes, because that's, what, that's not what this video is about, I'm going to say, yeah, let's back to Wheaton. Okay, so let me just calculate what it is now, um, ABV-wise, because we used SO4, which could continue to ferment. Uh, oh, wow, 1.100, starting grade. How did we get one point? Oh, the juice was 1.052. Okay. 1.100 <laughs> minus 0.994. So SO4 yeast went to uh, 14%. It's only supposed to go to 10%. So, and that it's at least that because the strawberries would have added some too. So I'm guessing we can probably back sweeten with impunity here. I don't think that's going to be a problem. If we're going to back sweeten, that's going to add to our volume. Do we want to rack and then back sweeten? Yes. Or? Yeah, we're going to rack so, and back sweeten, get rid of some of that lease. Do you want to go back to a, a wide mouth? I think mouth? we could probably go back to a wide mouth, okay. depending on what we end up with when we rack. Now, I'm just going to dump this sample right back into this new clean fermenter. And why am I able to do that? Because these have been sanitized in. <laughs> Someone made a comment on our channel recently about, I wonder what brand of sanitizer they used back in the 1100s. They didn't. We all know that they didn't. And repeatedly saying that, oh, they didn't do this 5,000 years ago, really doesn't make it right to ignore sanitization today. Because I would hazard to guess that back then, they made a lot of pretty nasty tasting brew, but they didn't throw it away or dump it down the drain like we might today because it was expensive and it was all they had. They made wines, meads, and stuff like that as preservation of food as much as something to drink to get drunk. So they wouldn't have wasted it. Therefore, they would have realized probably over time that being cleaner was better. While they didn't understand sanitization as we do today, they probably would have used the cleanest methods they knew of, okay? Probably with a little bit of superstition and things like that in there too, but they would have done the best they could. It is also my understanding that the Vikings actually were a more clean people than oh, yeah. most Europeans. They believed in bathing on a semi-regular basis. Yeah, but the Vikings weren't the only ones making needs and wants. Sure, I know, but I'm just saying that yep, they had I, a better understanding or appreciation of hygiene than yeah, I can one, appreciate that. one may think. So what I think is that today we get more successful brews, more consistently successful brews, and maybe even better tasting brews, because ours don't have that little bit of sourness to them or a little bit of an infection. And I still believe that that's why uh, a plain old mead was probably never made <laughs> because they might have gone a little sour most times or had a little bit of an uh, off flavor or whatever. So they hid that with spices and with fruits and things like that. It made it taste better. So that's why they did it. To say though that, oh, well, we shouldn't sanitize today because they didn't 10,000 years ago. That's kind of disingenuous. I just don't understand that. But that kind of comment happens every once in a while on our channel. And I just kind of roll my eyes and laugh and give that basic soliloquy back to them. Now I know some of you are probably watching this going, wow, that's really cloudy. Yes, it is. Yeah, and we're okay with that. Strawberries have a lot of pectin. And the cloudiness actually doesn't affect flavor. I don't, on something like this, I don't even care. A lot of people get really crazy about the clarity thing and it just doesn't make sense to me. We did a video on it. I just have never found clarity to be an issue. This is about as cloudy as I find something to not be offensive to me, though. Like, if it had bits floating in it, that's different. This isn't chunky. <laughs> it's just cloudy. There's a difference. Now, this is our second racking of this. I'm being careful, but not super careful, because a little bit of stuff getting in there isn't that big of a deal. I want to get as much product as I can, because we are going to add some sugar to this in just a minute. And there we go. Lost. <laughs> next to nothing. As you can see, this is still right up to the shoulders. We're good. I am going to add some sugar into that and um, that'll be that. Okay, so we're going to add some sugar to this now. And, you know, going back and forth in my head, I was thinking, okay, if we do half a pound of sugar, that brings that 0.994 up to like a 1.017. If it doesn't ferment further, that gives us a 
reasonably sweet flavor. It actually, you know, as I'm smelling it more, it has a good flavor component to it already. The base is good. So I don't want to go overly sweet, but I do think this might ferment it just a little bit more because it did drop down to 0.994, even though SO4 shouldn't. But you know what? This is just another example of yeast don't read. Yeah, we didn't teach them to read this time, so they don't know the rules. Anyway, half a pound of sugar. We're using pure cane sugar. You can use white sugar, corn sugar, whatever you want. So now, because we added more sugar, I need to stir this. Now, if you notice, I did not degas this yet. It was mostly degassed already, but I noticed as I was pouring the sugar in, there was some bubbles coming up. So there's a little bit of gas in here still, which is good. That helps with us being able to do this. But if you notice the way I'm stirring, I'm not sloshing it around. I'm not making a lot of extra waves or introducing more air to this. Now, our ABV is at such a height that we really aren't worried about vinegar occurring but oxygenating a brew is bad regardless because it can create off flavors now we say that it's bad some people actually have said that they've done that and it gives like a sherry flavor to things if you like that you can try it and it's a good experiment we might do it someday not this time though because you know strawberry cider sherry i don't know just doesn't work for me whenever you introduce sugar crystals to a brew what you want to do after you mix it for a while is stop and see what happens. Does it, does anything settle to the bottom? Like that. Yeah, there's, there's some settled on the bottom. It's okay. You just stir a little bit more. What I am going to want to do though is take another reading on this so that we have a record and we can test this in another week or two and see if it stays. Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't change at this point, now it's ready to bottle because now it's a stilled product that's ready to go. But we just want to make sure it isn't going to continue fermenting. This is a really good test slash example of, hey, you know what? Things don't always go exactly as planned. We didn't know that yeast was going to do that. How, how could we possibly know? But we know what to do. Had we bottled this right now, it could have kept fermenting a little bit. There wasn't much sugar left really to ferment. So it could have been okay. But we probably wanted it sweeter. So that's why we added some sugar. But if I just bottle it right now, what if it ferments again? That's the thing you need to learn with brewing is know what's safe and what's not. Could we do it and it'll be just fine? Very likely, but I don't want to take that chance. I'd rather not have that chance of a bottle exploding. Another week or two in here doesn't hurt me. And if it does, if that bothers you, you need to make more brews. And what I mean by make more brews is have several going at once so that you don't feel the need to have to babysit or do this one early or anything like that you can let them have their time let them do what they're supposed to do time heals all brews and as i said it should be 1017 it's actually 1018 1.018 so close enough um we added taste the 11th and i'm just going to pour this right back in everything's been sanitized everything's clean i'm not really worried about the little bit of oxygenation that could possibly happen from that not with something that's like 15 percent alcohol so we're just going to put the lid back on let this sit for another week or two and we'll see you then all right so we have done a bunch of stuff to this we put strawberries in it we took strawberries out of it we racked it we added more sugar just recently just a couple weeks ago so uh let's see where it's at before anyone asks no it did not clear well you know what i'm okay with that i don't know why i'm okay with that because I know don't change a thing. <laughs> I also know that this smells incredible right now. Now, if you're wondering why I'm taking this last reading, it's because we recently added half a pound of sugar to this a couple weeks ago, and I want to make sure that it didn't ferment any further. That way we know it's safe to bottle. And look at that, 1.018. It has not moved at all, Yay! which means perfect. This is ready to go. So I'm just going to pour this into our pitcher of racking i don't know we don't have names for everything <laughs> it's a pitcher we put stuff in it and if you're wondering why i'm using a pitcher it's because this is cloudy i can't see to the bottom and i want to know am i getting lease am i not getting lease so i want to make sure that i just get all the good stuff leave the lease behind and that way when we bottle it's totally safe to do so when racking we use wibble the white bucket of levitation. Hello. Sorry, I don't do jazz hands. <laughs> and 
and all you want to do when you're racking or anytime you're going to use a siphon is you put one vessel higher, one vessel lower, you get your tube set up. Now you can just use a regular tube if you don't have an auto siphon. Auto siphon is the easiest way to get it going. I'm just going to put this in about halfway down. I like to start halfway down. That way I can kind of get a feel for what's in there. Give it a few pumps and it should be going. There's about the, like the slightest hint of dust. There's not even dust at the bottom. It's like a suggestion of dust <laughs> at the bottom. It's just very, very little lease in there. And that's it. So I'm just going to take this and put it right into the pitcher and get this bottle out of the way. Put the pitcher up on top now. I do need to apply the bottling wand. Bottling wand. We talk about these all the time. It's just an extra piece of tubing that has a little spring-loaded tip on the end to let liquid flow or not flow, depending on how far into the bottle you have it. So bottling versus racking. Pretty much the same thing. Just in bottling, you're putting it into tinier little containers. And you use a bottling wand, usually. You don't have to, but it does make it a lot neater, because that way it'll stop the liquid pour and you can go to the next bottle without spilling any all over the place or without having to mess with clamps and crimping hoses and all that kind of crazy stuff. Something I did want to point out though, this is a very simple calculation for ABV. We might have mentioned it in a previous part of the video, but it started at 1.100 original gravity and it ended at 0 0.994. That gives us a number. I forget what it is. It's like 1.006. But anyway, the calculation is here and the end ABV is 14.3%. So this is pretty good, especially considering this is safe out SO4. It's supposed to be like 10%. So it went 4% above and beyond. Yeasts tend to do that when they have a lot of nutrition or in a really good environment. Um, I'm just going to start the bottling and maybe I'll continue talking then. I wanted to point something out to you guys too. You see this little cap on the end here? Someone just recently said, if you're in a an environment that doesn't have any lease, you can take it off. That way you're Siphon goes all the way to the bottom. Why didn't I think of that before? Now just remember when you're using a bottling wand, you have to push down inside the bottle or else it will not start. Up. I got it. And really, really simple. You probably can't see too much of that liquid. Let me see. No, you can't see it. I'll just put my finger at the side here to show you. And it rises up. It rises up. I stop when it gets to about here. Because the bottling wand itself is displacing the liquid to make it appear higher, and we want it to get pretty far go. up in here the neck. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go, and right there, so and take it out. He stopped here, but once he took the bottling wand out, the level went back down to here, and that's a perfect amount of headspace. We should have very limited oxygenization in this, and that's key. Now, it's 14.3%. The idea that this could become vinegar is pretty much not even a thought. It can't. We could get off funny flavors if you oxidize too much. And some people have said that strawberry in particular, when it sits too long, does change. And we did experience that. The last strawberry cider. After two years, it wasn't as good as what, what it was when we first made it. So uh, that's something to be aware of. And when you're doing this, always pay attention to what you're doing because I almost overfilled that bottle. <laughs> we are using 16 ounce beer bottles today. Um, why? Because it's what we had, and this is a cider. It's not going to be carbonated. That's something that comes up a lot. A lot of people seem to be thinking that we're making carbonated ciders all the time because we didn't show you a, a degassing. Well, this sat long enough that it degassed naturally. There was no gas in this. Normally, if it was bubbly, I would degas it, but we tend to let our brews go long enough lately that it's not really necessary. If you wanted this to be carbonated, well, you can't on this one because it, we went so far past the yeast tolerance. There's just no way. Those yeast would be like, no, can't do it. We're just not going to do it. And, you know, it's just not going to happen. Well, you could, but it would be more complicated. Yeah, it's beyond the scope of what we're doing for this particular video. I calculated out about eight bottles for this because we did get a full gallon of product pretty much. So I'm expecting that we'll have pretty much eight full bottles. We will uh, see you when we're done bottling. Okay. Again, the bottles made a liar out of me. We only got seven, but there was enough left for, uh, you know, a little snifter here. So uh, we're going to give you a taste. Well, we're going to take the taste. We're going to give you our opinion of it. <laughs> I smell like strawberry shortcake, the doll, when my when we were little, yeah. my sister's dolls. That's kind of what the, not quite as cheesy smelling, like as fake strawberry, but it does certainly have that kind of a smell. She just took a quick taste. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. 
nothing wrong with that at all. It's got just enough sweetness to cut through the tart strawberry flavor, but it's all strawberry. Tiny hint of the apple, but not a lot. I'm, I don't want to go into too much detail about this tasting because we will go into full detail in our tasting video. But the surprise note that I'm getting from this is cotton candy. You know, yeah, a little bit. So what we're going to do, strawberry and cider like this, although this is 14%, this isn't really a cider anymore. This is a strawberry apple wine. We can put one of these away for a year just to see what happens. I don't guarantee that it's going to be better, but I'm curious to see what happens. So one will get put away for a year. One will be tasted in you know, a week or two. You'll see that soon. And then the others, we're going to drink them. <laughs> but uh, if you like this video, we have about 300 videos on making wine, cider, mead, and beer on our channel. Thank you for liking and subscribing. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.